Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. A couple of announcements as we begin. We are living in exciting times. The governor has uh, rescinded the mask mandate, and our own Emanuel opening team met this week and revised our opening plan. And you can see a link to that plan uh, from News and Notes. So find News and Notes um, that was came out yesterday, and you can see what the um, what the reopening plan is. It looks like in a couple weeks we will be making our first steps. That's pretty exciting. Today is Confirmation Sunday. Four of our young people will stand before parents and friends and promise to follow Christ's way. We're gonna be recording the service. Uh, so if you would like the link, call the church office. We're not gonna post it publicly on YouTube. Next week is Pentecost. We won't be able to see you, but wear red anyway. It is Pentecost Sunday. And the choir is going to have a virtual anthem for us. So singers, if you have not yet recorded your version of the, uh, of the virtual anthem, please do so today. They are due today to Marlene. If you need more, if you need more information, speak with Chris Cherwin. Today, we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. And ascension is not just about Jesus leaving the earth, but about his promise to send us the Spirit. As Moses placed his spirit on Joshua, and as Elijah placed his spirit on Elisha after him, so Jesus promises his spirit to the community of faith. I invite you to rest in that spirit now. Breathe deeply and know that you are in the presence of a loving God. We begin our worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in this grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hid, hide in fear, Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 1. Luke writes, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom for, to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 47. I invite the congregation to read the bold text aloud. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. Who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. Who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nation, God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city 
until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almost. We are almost ready to gather again. Just relish those words with me. If the number of COVID infections continues to decline, if they keep declining, in a couple weeks, we'll take our first steps toward opening the Emanuel Building. Now that doesn't mean whoosh, everything's wide open, but we will begin to allow some smaller meetings and some smaller baptisms and funerals and weddings. A few weeks later, we hope to be able to broadcast from the sanctuary. And a couple weeks later, if the cases continue to decline, we'll begin some form of worship together. We have preparations to make, we have technology to install. So we ask for your patience, but we're on the way. I can finally see open doors in our future. And not just at Emmanuel. Can you feel this? The city is starting to come alive. Soon it will feel like, well, Easter. Our dreams of resurrection are coming true. Just stop and sit with that for a moment. After so much fear and loss, after so many unknowns, so much tension and frustration, Soon, very soon, we will be together. Can you just give me a little joy in the chat this morning? I want to hear from you guys. What are you looking forward to? What are you feeling? We are almost there. We've been dreaming of that moment, that reopen moment since March 15, 2020. And we'll get there. We will open doors. And then what? Who have we become? What has this year shaped us into? How have we been burnished by the fire? And then what's next? What will our new dream be when this dream is fulfilled? These days make me think of the disciples at the Ascension. They were so like us. They knew the world had changed. They'd been through fire and grief and loss and confusion. And then they witnessed resurrection. They saw firsthand what God can do, how God can act beyond our power, beyond our imagination, how even death cannot contain God's life-giving presence. They knew that exciting times were in front of them. They'd stepped into a whole new reality. But like us, they were not sure what was coming next. So they tried to press this new world into the mold of the old one. Lord, they said, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? 
Is this when we go back to the way it was? Is this when all that we remember and loved can happen again? Is this when the best that we can imagine will come true? Oh, disciples, you are thinking too small. You are too bound in your own time and space. You are in the presence of the resurrected God. What can happen now? If the dead don't stay dead, anything can happen now. Notice how Jesus responded. He said, it is not for you to know the chronos or the kairos are the two Greek words, chronos and kairos. I'll translate those as the date on the calendar or when God will act, human dates and God's time. You don't get to know those. There are things that you don't get to know, but you can know this, that God will work through you, that God will give you the power, the ability, the resources, the opportunities. God will give you the power of the spirit to spread resurrection, life, and hope. So what's next, people of Emmanuel? in the presence of the resurrected one and the power of the spirit. Just opening the building is way too small. In light of Easter, what does being open mean anyway? What are we open for? What are we open to? This morning, I would like to propose a bit broader definition of open for the days ahead. In the days ahead, we can be open to welcoming all people into our midst. Look at that first community of the disciples. We can tell by their names that some were Greek and some were Hebrew. We know some were radically political, and some were fishermen keeping their heads down and just trying to get by. One was a tax collector, not exactly a model of morality. Many stayed in the background. And they all were raised in a culture of achievement and patronage. People judged them according to their family of origin, their career and their savings account. But Jesus invited them into a new kind of community, a community of respect and sharing and dignity for all, for all of them and anyone who joined them. As we follow Jesus today, open means open to anyone who comes. The trans kid who never heard that he is beautiful and beloved can now be surrounded by a new family. The woman in the wheelchair who mostly sees looks of pity can be invited to share her many gifts. The grieving widower who isn't sure he can believe in God anymore has his faith held for him until he can take it up again. A CEO sits next to a homeless kid who sits next to new parents, all trying to figure out who they are as children of God. We can open ourselves to whoever walks in the door and invite them not into the building, but into the community of Christ and make sure that they know they are gifted and they are beloved. So one way to think about open is opening our doors to all those who come in. The other way is opening our doors so we can go out, so we can offer the love of God more and more to our neighbors where they are. We've learned this year that God doesn't need a building. Think about all the glorious ways that God's work was done in our community this year. 
Emmanuel prayed and sang and heard the word of God. We raised funds and volunteered in the community. We gathered virtually alone and with other churches to learn the depths of racial injustice. Children and teens gathered online or in backyards. We listened to, supported, and cared for each other, all without being in the building. As we begin to meet in our building again, and oh, won't that be glorious? But as we begin in the building again, can we stay open to the world outside of it? Can we listen carefully and with humility to the experience of our neighbors and listen prayerfully to God for ways to bring life and hope where it is needed? Can we be open to the wild, extravagant imagination of God who might call us into something we never expected? How open can we be to the calling of the Spirit, being called out? How open can we be to reorienting our idea of church? I fully believe that in prayer and conversation and humble listening, we will be able to hear God calling to us from the neighborhood. Can we be open to follow where Christ leads. We are almost there. We've been dreaming of this reopen moment for 427 days. What will our new dream be when this old dream is fulfilled? Let's not dream small. Let us dream dreams worthy of the resurrected Christ in our midst. Let us dream dreams filled with the power of the Spirit. Let us dream of being open, truly open to the future that God is calling us into. Amen.
Let us pray together. As I recite the petition, hear us, O God, please respond with, your mercy is great. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, in Christ Jesus, with joy of the church is made complete. Root the church in your word and unify us as Christ's body. Bless the work of this faith community, as well as our partner congregations, the Mikimbisi and Magabike Lutheran Churches of Tanzania, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Guatemala, and the Living Gospel Believers Church in St. Paul. Send us into the world as your loving people, ready to testify to your spirit at work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, the world is your handiwork, displaying your creative impulse. Seeds teem with life, forests reach up to praise you, and the mystery of life lies deep in the soil. Guard and keep this world for the well-being of all your creatures. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Great this sovereign, those who follow your ways are like trees planted near streams of water. Establish the leaders of nations and all in authority in your grace and truth. Strengthen them so that the people they serve will have abundant life. Hear it, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcast, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need especially Wanda, Jim, Beth, Hepibin, Florence, Troost, Phil, Roger, Susan, Karen, Sandy, Rachel, David, Riel, Sarah, Natalie, Craig, Nathan, Andrea, Ricky, Jeff, and his family. Lord, rest your healing hands upon them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Saving God, your wonderful promise is the gift of eternal life in Jesus. Through the witness of those who have died in you, strengthen us now in this gift of life. We cherish the memory of your saints as we remember in our hearts today, our brother Jim on his death this past week. Be with his family as they mourn his loss. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hmm. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the earth and claiming us as your own. With the saints of all time, we worship you, holy God. We worship you, holy God. We praise you for your eternal word, for conquering death, and for raising us up to new life. For your word alive among us, we praise you, living God. We praise you, living God. Breathe the spirit of the risen Christ on us, that we may honor your earth and serve all in need. For your word filling our Easter life, we bless you, loving God. We bless you, loving God. All worship, praise, and blessing be to you, source, power, and sustainer of life, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>